In this question, we're given a signal in the frequency domain, and we're asked to find the power of that signal. But the question asks for the power of the signal in the time domain. It shouldn't make a difference, but the question is sort of nudging us towards finding the inverse Fourier transform of the signal. Now, if you look at the signal, there's a, a bunch of impulses, one, two, three, four. But if you look at the frequencies, it looks like these are two pairs of impulses. A pair at plus minus two radians per second and a pair at plus minus nine radians per second. So they both happen to have the same magnitude, so it would look something like that. So two, nine, minus two, minus nine. So this is the spectrum that we're looking at. Now each two of these, each two of these represent in the time domain a cosine. And just to remind you, if you look at this line here in the Fourier transform table, when you have an impulse, here we have a scaling factor of pi, but ignoring that, when you have two impulses, at plus and minus omega, that gives you a cosine. So looking at that, that means that would translate to 4 over pi cosine 2t. And that would translate to 4 over pi cosine 9t. And because they're added together, the linearity means that we can add the signals together. So I can write that as x of t. This is now my time domain signal, x of t. And the question is, find the power of x of t. So to find the power of a sine wave, you would take the amplitude, you would square it, and you would divide by 2. And if you have more than one, you can just add those powers. So the power of x is simply half 4 over pi squared plus half 4 over pi squared. That's just 16 over pi squared. So for questions like this, see if you can find known Fourier pairs. So in this case, it happens to be easy because you've got them next to each other. They don't always have to be like that. It just happens that the uh, scaling factors in this question are the same as well.